All right, let's create some nodes so that we can get them enlisted and then commissioned. While we commission those, we're going to want to watch the uh, ARP table grow. And we can do that with this command. I also like to use IPTRAF to monitor the traffic per MAC address on that network. Now there is a restriction in the Virtual Machine Manager GUI that it will not let you proceed with creating a virtual machine unless you give it an ISO of some sort for the installation media. Although we won't be using a CD or an ISO to install our nodes, we have to feed it something. Okay, we'll go in and create a new virtual machine. Our first node, node 0. We want to browse over to our nothing ISO. And we'll kick the RAM down to a half a gig since we'll be making a handful of these. As before, I'll manually provision this QCOW2 disk image where I want it to be. And as before, we want to customize before we proceed. First, let's look at the boot order. We want to go pixie boot, then hard disk. As before, I prefer to manually specify vert.io for the disk and the NIC models. And we need to make sure that this node is in the right network. Okay, I'm going to launch the installation. And then I'm going to do something ridiculously unthinkable. I'm going to pull the virtual power plug. And I did that because we can now do a virtual machine clone using the GUI. That takes about four or five console commands and turns it into a nice easy process. So we're going to keep on cloning. I want to create five nodes for our test scenario. Okay, last one. Okay, we're now going to fire up each of these virtual machines. and we can watch them go through the boot process and commission themselves. This will take just a few moments. I'm going to pause the recording until it gets closer to the end. Okay, these machines are booting to the enlistment image, if you will. I expect they will register themselves and then shut themselves down.
OK. We have five nodes that are now added. As soon as they shut down, we can go start configuring the power parameters. Before we do that, we kind of need to know which ones of these are node 0 through 4. And that will be fairly easy to determine. We can use the verse dump XML command to determine, for example, which MAC address node 0 has from the virtualization layer. So that will be node 0, 0163. So now we need to edit this guy. Go ahead and give it a name so that we can recognize it later. Again, the MAS documentation on virtual nodes will tell you how to construct this string. So now we'll go through and identify each of these. This would be the part in a real data center with actual hardware where you would be provisioning your baseband management controllers, iDRAC and the such, instead of running around a data center, we're querying MAC addresses. B7BD DB. There we go. So this may seem like a lot of work, but it's far less work than configuring five physical servers, in my opinion. And by process of elimination we can presume that this one is number four. Okay, no more warnings and errors. Very good. At this point, we can go ahead and um, get these guys commissioned. get my IP traffic monitor going again. So this next step will be pretty cool. We can keep an eye on a handful of things as we're moving along here. There's our virtual machine manager. And so to demonstrate the power integration of MAS, when I hit go on commission, MAS will, via SSH, issue the verse command to power on these nodes. As you can see here, they're coming up. And now again we can open the VGA consoles to watch what's happening. So take note, over in our MAC monitoring area, we now see the IP to MAC associations in the ARP table. 
that can be kind of handy. Another tool I use to monitor virtual machines is called VertTop, and uh, basically it shows all of the running virtual machines as well as some performance metrics. On the Maz side of things, we can go monitor the log files just to kind of see what's happening behind the scenes. This is useful for troubleshooting and also monitoring. As some of the nodes execute and boot, you'll probably see some activity in these logs specifically around things like DHCP and browsing the web interface and the Pixie boot. Okay. Our status back here is good. We're still basically in a state where we have five nodes that are um, still in the provisioning process. And once again, when this stage completes, each of these VMs will shut themselves down. And that will be the moment where we can actually facilitate and coordinate um, this metal as a service against those machines. So again, that would be the equivalent of racking up five new servers in a data center configuring the BMC uh, or whatever out-of-band management tool is um, built in and um, getting them prepped to um, load an OS on demand. Our first one came through. There's the second. And they're all checked in. I had actually intended to load the precise release on node 0 rather than trusty. And so we're going to redo node 0, editing node 0 here to specify that I want 1204 precise rather than 1404 trusty. So I'll save that node and I will recommission just that one node. So I'm going to pause the recording while that happens. Okay, Node 0 just redid itself with the precise image. And now, since we have five nodes that are queued and ready to go, I'm going to ask them all to start, which should cause them to boot. One, two, three, four, and five. What we expect to have happen now is that each of these machines will boot up and run through an automated installation of the Ubuntu server operating system release precise on node 0 and the trusty release on the remainder of those nodes. And again our MAC table is populated. We can watch the traffic per MAC address here if we so choose. We have our vert top and then again our mass logs that we're tailing in real time. And they are all off to the races. I'm going to pause the recording because this will take quite a while. I did not select the option for fast path installation so it's actually going to go through the whole process of uh, downloading packages and installing rather than
just booting from an image. Okay, so we let the node provisioning and commissioning take place. And we have five new nodes enlisted and commissioned. One of them on um, node zero is running precise, the rest are running trusty. Next up is to confirm that we can access these via SSH. So we'll initiate an SSH session to any one of the IPs of these nodes with the Ubuntu user from the MAS controller. And indeed, we were able to log in. It appears that we also have network connectivity from that node. So here's a little DNS trick. We can do a dig dash x, rather just a dig at localhost of node zero dot master, and we can see that node zero is currently the 107 IP. And we can query each of them to obtain those IPs. As an aside, we could go ahead and modify our name server resolution to query the local host. Keep in mind this change will probably not survive a reboot. To make it permanent, you would need to edit the interface. So now I should be able to just do a dig node0.master and find that it resolves. I'll scoot over to uh, a uh, full screen terminal here. So I should be able to say I want to go to node4.master, like so. And in I am. Just to confirm each of them, I'll do the same. Very good. Okay, node two, node one. We'll go back to node 0. Just confirming that node 0 really is precise. And um, as you can tell from the message of the day login on the others, those were confirmed as trusty. So we can do all kinds of other things. For example, we could stop the nodes. I wouldn't recommend that. That pretty much is a hard stop and kills the power for those nodes. We could do graceful shutdowns of these nodes using Virtual Machine Manager. But I'm going to call that a wrap for this video. I hope you've enjoyed and I'll catch you on another clip.